Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's device management interface call. Thanks for joining. As usual, uh, the call is public and recorded, so it will be shared on YouTube. Please be mindful of your comments and uh, the information you share within the group. Um, so uh, on the topics for today, uh, I have some. Um, uh, the first topic is the startup configuration with uh, a patch that uh, was merged and it was uh, given by Amit. Uh, Amit, do you want to give us an update on, on this? Just a few thoughts on what you did. Uh, yes, Andrew. So, yeah, as part of this uh, patch set, we uh, brought in the support for a startup configuration, so specifically for devices which need a uh, a configuration to get started with, right? And if that configuration needs to be updated later on, right? So there should be a mechanism to do so. And this uh, patch set addresses that. So uh, also, so if you look in the patch set, the only thing that we are passing in here is a URL uh, as to where this configuration is present. And uh, the device manager implementation is expected to uh, pull the configuration for this specific device uh, from that uh, location. And uh, how it applies it on the device, or it could even actually pass it down to the device. Uh, it's, it's totally up to the implementation of the device and the device manager. Uh, but uh, also thinking on this, we are still thinking as to, uh, uh, should we also have uh, some kind of an identifier to identify this specific configuration. So should there be something like a, a separate version field or something which can identify this? And uh, should we also have an option of uh, being able to retrieve uh, what was the startup config that we uh, set, but uh, we're still thinking about this and seeing if there are real use cases where this would be needed. Isn't the URL a, a unique thing such that you don't need any more identifiers because they could put whatever string they want in there. So if they wanted to put a version into URL string, couldn't they just add that on the end with a slash? Yeah, that's that's correct. So so right now the example also that we have put, we are saying that, okay, the URL could say that, okay, whatever, CFG one underscore whatever, one dot two dot three dot something, some text or XML, which should be unique. Right, and could identify uniquely that particular configuration. Uh, but uh, thinking about the use case of if we want to retrieve it back, right? So if someone wants to know, okay, what is the startup config that is uh, running on a device? Then uh, how do we do that, right? Uh, Wouldn't that just be pass them back the URL that they set? Here's what you told me to download. Here's what I downloaded. Otherwise you're enforcing all configs to have version in some way, and that that may be device specific or vendor specific. Where if you say, look, here's the URL, I, you, when you set it, or mm -hmm. when you uh, push it at the device, it'll download from there. And um, when you request it, I'll tell you which one I downloaded, but version management is outside of my control. Otherwise you're gonna get, just as you said, you're gonna get kind of start forcing a standard of what that URL looks like. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah, I think this this makes sense. Yeah, I think that's that's something we can propose. So uh, yeah, we, uh, I'll work through this uh, maybe in the next uh, meeting or on the Slack. I will post uh, or, or call for some discussions on this topic. But uh, I, I agree to your point, David. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thanks, Amit. Uh, regarding the metrics on, on BBSIM, uh, we talked about it last uh, meeting and also in the TST uh, that uh, we just had uh, two days ago. Uh, these are, I can consider them to be uh, done. Uh, Amit, is there anything else that is missing and we need to do? Or you need to, uh, or is it plan to submit? Uh, for the metrics and stop managing device, I think they are done. 
Perfect. That, that is that is very good. And uh, we are gonna to have these released in uh, 2.6 along with uh, BB Sim. So that is uh, very good uh, news. Uh, even the get managed device, I think, is done. Okay, the next point. Yep. Perfect. Yeah, uh, you can just look up into the documentation. I think uh, the BB Sim. Uh, documents, I think it should be there. Oh, okay. No, BBC. Oh, yeah. Mm, I should go to actually this one. Uh, the docs source. Yeah, the MD file. Yeah, just look for get managed device. Search for that. Now, there should be an example down there as well. Just check. Yeah, it works. Perfect. Okay, great. Uh, great. That's, that's awesome. So I think, uh, uh, are we missing anything uh, from your perspective on BBSIM for the, for the release? Uh, actually, we were supposed to work even on the alarms, uh, but uh, that's uh, derailed a little bit of the schedule. But uh, we are still trying uh, to have something in by uh the seventh or eighth but i don't think that's getting for the release right so if it comes in good if not then i think it's okay no but we'll, we'll try to push it in okay okay and um so next up, uh, there is a proposal that I want to submit to everybody with that I from uh, uh, Holger, uh, which unfortunately is not in the meeting today, but uh, he submitted it uh, to me um, for in the next for uh, updating some of the reason and error uh, strings. Uh, that uh, uh, you, um, I copied this uh, proposal in a, a file here. Um, and uh, the idea would uh, to be uh, to use the standard gRPC error model uh, that is described in here and uh, return an optional string error message and uh, some of the reasons uh, we could use the some of the generic reasons and some of the specific reasons uh, we could uh, use uh, here. Um, uh, they are also proposing to change invalid config to invalid startup config. Um, I am fine with this. I don't see any issues in why we are we shouldn't use this, uh, shouldn't go for this proposal. Um, but I would like to hear everybody's opinion and also uh, give everybody some time to take a look at this because uh, it, it's really something that came in this morning and I did not have the time to share via email before. Uh, so any immediate thoughts? Can you scroll down to the bottom? I just want to see the reason for the startup versus the non-startup again. I'm not sure about the last one, but I have to look at the context. I mean, generally, I think Okay, uh, you know, invalid config. I, I, invalid start config seems very specific. I'm not sure what case he saw that for. Right? If if I'm setting the config and I get invalid config, obviously the config I'm setting is invalid. If I'm setting a configuration on event and I get invalid config, then obviously the config for that event 
is incorrect. So uh, I'm not sure the specific one on that one. Okay, let me make a note of this. Okay, I think we can share this feedback with uh, with Holger. Um, Amit, uh, what do you think of uh, the other points? Yeah, I uh, I think it's uh, a good idea, but I uh, would want to understand uh, exactly what Holger has in mind because uh, we are talking about this reason, so we still have to define an enum, right? Yep. Because the, the standard uh, codes that come for GRPC has those 16 codes, and these are not those, right? These are new new codes that we want to introduce. Mm -hmm. Right, so. Yeah, I, is, I Yeah, so that is one. And uh, the so right now, the way we are uh, uh, Transmitting back the errors is through, a, I think it's called a status and a reason in the return message. So uh, if you bring this in, then uh, that won't be needed. But uh, I have a question on how do we deal with uh, the streams, right? So, uh, so for example, we, uh, 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 a response which is supposed to come back on the stream uh, and the device manager wants to send back an error on that because uh, at the time when it received the request, uh, there was no problem, but later on it got into an error situation, right? And then now it wants to uh, return back an error. So on the stream, how do you return back errors? Makes sense. So the, the current uh, way we have done it is that whatever responses are supposed to come back on the stream, uh, those responses have a status and error field, right? So only if the status is okay, right? Then we interpret the response or whatever, basically, right? We, we have to say that uh, using those we can indicate. So do we still need to retain that or do we have some other thoughts on that? Is something uh, I would want to uh, learn as well. Sure. Okay. I think for this we would need Holger. If you have any other comments, uh, please do put them in uh, in the document here and uh, see uh, if we have any reply from uh, from uh, Holger uh, and the the rest of the folks uh, and uh, we'll see what uh, what we do with uh, with it I don't think uh, this is terribly urgent uh, because uh, given the fact that it would entangle a little bit of a, some changes uh, within uh, also the implementation of the interface, I would say that we could do this post uh, releasing uh, the first iteration of the server on BBSIM. Uh, is that, uh, would that be a right understanding? Meaning after 2.6. Uh, how well, how how soon after the first official release would you make these changes? Because if you're changing the return messages, it's technically changing the interface. It is. So that's a significant change. 
right? Because if we start building tests that expect certain results back or reason state reason strings back, um, then change some of that. That's going to be non-trivial potentially. Yeah, I see what you mean. Uh, the thing is, it's already been implemented, so it would require changes already right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> so. All right. I mean, we could we could say we don't change the error return methods. We just change some of the reasons. So um, yeah, but so we I, saw it with Volt, Volt Cuddle, right? The tests were looking at the reason strings. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So Andrea, uh, one thing that uh, I would want to understand from Holker is to, uh, as in, what is the problem with the current scheme of things? Uh, agree that we would have to add more reasons uh, in the current reason field. But uh, what is the big problem with that? Is it just this is a better way of doing things or do we really have a problem that we need to fix using this approach? Right, because that would also tell us how urgent or critical this is. Okay. Uh, okay, let's uh, let's uh, take this feedback to Holger and see what he says, um, and see what uh, what we what we need to do. We still do have a meeting before the release, which is good. So let's uh, let's reconvene on on this uh, after we get some some replies from Holger and uh, and the rest of the folks that he put this together with. Any other question? Okay. Um, then I'll make sure Holger uh, takes a look at the document and also uh, reviews the recording that I have, so he share uh, he looks and comments on it and gives us his feedback about this. Okay. Uh, next up, something that uh, I wanted to uh, bring up is that there is a patch, and thanks a lot to Uwe from Adtan for putting this together with the help of Thorsten. There's a patch in Volta System Tests. Uh, that uh, does include uh, uh, the tests, as you can see here, for uh, the uh, for an initial for the initial implementation of this interface on top of BBSIM. Uh, it works both with BBSIM, as is with based on this file, and with an AdTrend device manager that AdTrend is putting together. Uh, which is in uh, which information is set in this file. These are very preliminary uh, tests. Uh, it just uh, uh, get the manager's device, uh, start managing a device, uh, um, stop managing a device, uh, and uh, uh, checks for uh, um, some um, some strings uh, and there are some other basic tests uh, in here that uh, um, well sorry did I pick the wrong one there we go it checks the inventory data the configurable component uh, uh, the loggable entities, the endpoints, uh, and um, and just set, set, uh, check the physical inventory, the UUID, the log. Again, many many of our basic stuff. This is not yet testing any metric because that uh, capability came in a little later. But I think that after we merge this one, they are going to come up with. Uh, a patch to uh, uh, get those uh, included also. 
What's different between the test if it's run on PVSIM versus the iTrain device? There is really just... no difference. It's just a few parameters. If you take a look at those two files, it just specifies some expected return values differently. Uh, yes, that's what I was actually worried about. I mean, I understand parameters for setup or connectivity, but if we're starting to get different responses back, I mean, part of this was that be a universal API for device, such as standard that we can test the device appliances. If they're giving different responses, isn't that well, an issue? But the, the, the thing is that uh, you, you might have different components and different descriptions. So, Again, it, uh, is the differences between these responses in in the spirit of a, a universal kind of consistent API? To me, it is because there's a name of a certain element and uh, the element has a description and a certain value, uh, which is consistent with what we expect out of a, okay. a number of things and uh, out of the API that we wrote. Uh, you're more than welcome to take a, a deeper look that we can do right now yeah. and, and check. Uh, I'll and trust you. <laughs> <laughs> but if there is something that doesn't uh, like totally uh, convince you, we can we can discuss it and no. we can come up with better. No, no, I'm I'm good. I, I mean, things like if they're turning one's returning a different error response or a different success response than the other. For the same request, I mean, if, if it's describing the devices, is that is that what's different? That's fine. But if there's, no, you know, if some, someone says OK capitals and someone else returns OK lowercase, that type of thing, but there's a, a a compliance issue in some sense. No, no, I think that so the the, the elements are the same. It's just that the name of the element is different. Yeah, uh, in our which is reasonable. Element. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. So so I think what would be different across devices uh, is the inventory, right? Because uh, so this interface uh, says that the inventory is reported as a tree structure. Now, depending on the specific device, the tree could be different. And also the number of components of a device could be different. So maybe some OLTs have four power supplies, four fans, some of them have two fans, right? And things like that. So I think the flexibility is there in, uh, in all of this being in this tree structure and this parent-child relationship. But uh, but if we take that as a block saying that, okay, this is the inventory and every device has this inventory, but all the operations on this inventory, right? Through the interfaces that we have, that should be standard across all the devices. Yep, I agree. Yeah, yeah totally agreed, Amit. So if you have a little bit of time, uh, just please do review this. Um, and just uh, give, us, uh, give us your thoughts. Uh, this is uh, probably gonna be merged um, before the Volta system test tag for 2.6. So we do have some tests for our release too. Um, so they're gonna be merged, and I need to create a Jenkins job to set to create those to create to nightly test our uh, DMI and uh, uh, also make sure that we do not uh, like break the API in any time. And uh, when in January of Q1 2021, we're also gonna test this on the Adtran OLT uh, and the physical Adtran device manager. So that's pretty good. Uh, so anything missing for the 2.6 release? Again, I want to merge these tests, which are, which are good. Uh, and I want them in uh, in, BBC, in the Volta system test repo before code freeze, but uh, we're, I'm working with Uwe and Torsten to, make, to get that done, which is perfect. Uh, but I don't see anything else missing for uh, 2.6. Uh, is there anybody, does anybody have anything that they want to include? Even though we are not really releasing uh, together with Volta, uh, I think that at the moment we are in a pretty good shape to have the 
in the interface being released uh, alongside with the BB SIM tools and the Volta system tests. And uh, it coincides with uh, the Volta and it's also a three month increment. So I think it's a pretty good time, time frame to release. Objections or any thoughts? No? Okay. Uh, then uh, those were my topic for today. Uh, does anybody else have any other topics that they want to bring forward uh, to the team? Uh, yeah, Andrea, so I have one, uh, again, a requirement that uh, we have seen. Um, so the example that we have is uh, uh, a requirement where um, basically we have built the SFP uh, as a component, right? But then the connector that goes into the SFP, right? So how do we model that? So uh, so basically things like whether the cable that's connected to it is a, is a fiber or copper, uh, what protocol is it? It's a pawn link or ethernet and what kind of speed it is, whether it's a 10G port or a 100G port. So I think uh, what could be done is uh, there is another uh, component type called port and port should be a children or a child of the SFP, right? But uh, in the current model, uh, there aren't placeholders where we could have uh, this other kind of information. So uh, currently still thinking on it, what we could do. Uh, so if we have any suggestions, uh, we're pretty much welcome for those. So right now, what I was thinking is if we could uh, have something like uh, additional info, which is a map of st strings, right, on both sides, uh, where uh, if there are any additional information of a particular component that could be encoded, but then again, it becomes something which is not very standard, right? Because different vendors could put in different information in there. But uh, the problem is that the kind of fields that we are talking about is not generic across all components. So I agree that the map of strings is not really something that we want. Um, what? Why do you say that a set of fields is not valid across every uh, component? Well, SFP component? No, it's no. So the structure that we have is component, which is a generic structure for all components, right? Whether it's a fan or a CPU. Oh, or yeah, a, yeah, 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 yeah. A port. Yeah. So if I say speed, right, speed is only for a port. Uh, it doesn't make sense for anything else. Mm, I see. Uh, we could make it, well, could we, could we make it optional? Mm. So really the question is how do we deal with uh, specific component type attributes? Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, normally what's happening in GRPC particularly, right? You're, you're being very explicit. Right? You're, you're defining each and every one of those types. Or you're essentially modeling it in the API. Which would say, you know, we're going we're gonna to model all SFPs the same. We're going to model all XYZ components the same. Um, or at least have the same common attributes, and you can't go beyond that. So, you know, do we do that? Do we allow specific component types but fully model them in protobuf? Yeah, I, I think I get what uh, you're suggesting, uh, David. So basically what we could do is uh, 
instead of uh, calling it a, a map of strings, we define a component specific uh, messages or protobufs. And uh, inside our generic component, we have a one-off, right? So depending on the type of component it has, it is, right? It would have its specific attributes, but it is uh, strongly defined. Strongly yep. typed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Strongly typed, which means if anybody wants to extend it, it becomes a protobuf chain. But yeah. yeah, yeah, I think yeah, that's that's I think a good suggestion. Yes, we could we could adopt that. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. Yep. That looks sounds sounds good to me. Uh, is this okay. a requirement for? Uh, a short time frame, or is it a little bit longer time frame? Meaning, uh, I don't think it is for two dot six. It will to that. Yeah. Okay. As in, not not for this code freeze, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Good. Any other suggestions or any other thoughts? No. Okay. Uh, Thanks, Amit, for, for sharing this. Any other topic that anybody wants to bring up? I'm good. No? Okay. Then if not, we're going to get some time back. And uh, thanks, everybody, for joining. I'll uh, talk to you next time. And please do uh work on the action items and work on things that we talked about uh, and uh, if you have any questions mailing list is lack as always uh, we're always available uh to discuss thanks a lot everybody cheers bye-bye thank you bye.